So this video, we are looking at parametric equations and this time finding the second derivative. So on the previous video, there was how to cope with parametric equations when you want the first derivative. Um, now we're looking for the second derivative for things like determining the nature of stationary points. So we have this question about a curve and it's defined by the parametric equations as follows. And then we're going to find the stationary points and determine their nature. So the first thing is to find dx by dt and dy by dt. From there we can find dy by dx as dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx like so and then of course we find the stationary points by setting that equal to zero. So we get 3 minus 3t three squared oops, is 0, so 3 equals 3t three squared, t squared is 1, so t is plus or minus 1. So that means we have stationary points so when t equals 1 or when t equals minus 1. And I'm just going to rewrite what x and y were over the, at the side here since they're off the screen now, just to remind us so that we can work them out for these stationary points. So now we have the coordinates of the stationary points being 2, 3 and 2, minus 1, just by substituting in those values of t being 1 and minus 1. Now we need to determine their nature. So for that we need to find the second derivative. Now a second derivative means that we want to differentiate dy by dx again with respect to x. So if doing d of dx of dy by dx. So that's what that notation is saying, is differentiate dy by dx again with respect to x. But the problem with parametric equations is we can't differentiate with respect to x because it's not expressed as an x, it's expressed with t in it. So we need to use the chain rule on it again. Um, so this is the same as if we differentiate with respect to t of dy by dx, and then multiply it by dt by dx. So this is actually doing the chain rule again. If you remember what we thought about before, because then that would sort of cancel out the dt's would cancel there, and you're left with d by dx. So that's your important bit of notation there, is to differentiate your first derivative again, but with respect to t, and then multiply it by dt by dx, and we'll go ahead and do that on this one. So first I'm just separating out those um, parts of the fraction there to be 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 t squared, make it a little easier to differentiate. So then the second derivative will be to differentiate this thing, which gives us minus 3t and then multiply it by dt by dx. So if we scroll back up to the top here, we'll see dx by dt was 2. So this means we are multiplying it by 1 over 2, which gives us that the second derivative is minus 3t over 2. Now the stationary points that we had, we had when t is 1, we get a stationary point of 2, 3 when t was 1. So if t was 1, d2y dx squared would be equal to minus 3 over 2. This is less than 0, therefore we have a maximum. We'll do the same for the other one. The other one was at the coordinates of uh, 2 minus 1. So if we have 2 minus 1 when t was minus 1, the second derivative was equal, would be equal to uh, 3 over 2, which is greater than 0. Therefore, that one is a minimum. And that's it. So that's finding the second derivative. This bit right here is your important bit to focus on and make sure you've written down. It means that we differentiate our first derivative and then multiply it by dt by dx.